Ford Nissan Titan XD Media Launch in Arizona, and I'm here with Todd Schuler. Todd Schiller. Todd Schiller. And you are the big engineer. What's your job? I'm part of the uh, marketability team for uh, vehicle test and development. Oh, cool. So you're the guy who makes it all happen after they tell you what they want, and you make it happen. I'm part of the team that brings it all together. Okay, cool. Well, there's a lot to look at under here. Capabilities of the Titan XD. Okay, part of that goes to the class four receiver hitch. I see. That's on the right side. And a little bit farther forward, we have our integrated uh, gooseneck. Uh, oh yeah, you can see the framework for that. You can see the frame, and it's, yeah. it's integrated right into the uh, rear frame of the Titan XD. And, uh, so that's a two-piece channel. I thought it was just one. That looks very stable. I like that. So that is very good. And that's where you would tie on a fifth wheel by using the chain pucks and the ball. It's a, it's a standard gooseneck. Right. And will offer a uh, fifth wheel as an accessory part. Okay, well, it looks, it looks like a Reese Signature Series. Do you know who the vendor is that... You no, bought it I do not know. Very similar to Ford, detail. except the configuration is different. But yeah, the ball and all that looks very similar to Ford. I've always liked your frame. You guys were one of the first ones to do a box frame, as I recall. Back on That's the correct. Model. We've, we've carried what we've learned and know from our uh, ND commercial uh, truck. So you can see it's a 40 box ladder frame and you can see the large section lights as well. Yeah, it's a lot taller than it used to be. That's correct. And it's unique for Titan XD and it's really the platform that allows us for that uh, payload and towing capability for this truck. Well, that's good. It also looks thicker than last time. Looking at the edge of the weld, it's thicker frame than it was. What, uh, what is this, an atomic bomb, or what is this thing? Is this a particular filter? So, <laughs> uh, with the, of course, with the Cummins 5-liter V8 diesel, uh, they also have responsibility for the after treatment, and that's what you see here. Wow. The catalytic converter, expansion chamber, and then tail tube. So is that the particular filter, or is that the catalytic converter? No, that's, uh, I really should have Steve from uh, okay. Cummins here to walk yeah. through Yeah, we'll ask him that looks pretty complicated for a catalytic converter with a lot of hose on that. Wow, and then uh, the front end is beefed up too, still a wishbone style suspension. Yep, double wishbone with a front stabilizer bar. And uh, on the rear we have the solid rear axle with the uh, leaf spring suspension and also a stabilizer bar there. Okay, so this is a torsion on the front or what's the suspension made out of on the front? I see the shock, I don't see the torsion bar. No, there's uh, Oh, I see it's a coil over, so it's a coil over suspension, okay. Well, that makes sense. That's a gigantic anti-sway bar. That's a very big one. That's about what you see on a one-ton. Now, you went to this to be more robust, or why do we wear a recirculating with, ball? We, again, we went with the recirculating ball from our knowledge on our commercial vehicles, and yes, for the durability, the strength, for the loads, and uh, capability that we want on the Titan. Okay. Well, good. Yeah, it's an half foot bed, yeah, so it's like your biggest truck ever. Four wheel drive. Yes. Yes, that's awesome. But uh, we really felt that was what was needed and required to give it that stable towing platform. Sure. That's true. It takes a lot. You know, goosenecks pull better than bumper pulls, but you want something that's not going to swerve all over the place. Does this have a rear anti-sway bar? I didn't even look. I saw the lease. It does. Um, Unfortunately, on this prototype, oh, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't have it uh, applied, but we do okay. have a rear uh, stabilizer bar. And then the vehicle also has the uh, trailer sway control. Yes, it has been in the package. Yes. A lot of you guys broke the lot of, a lot of rules back then. I remember well the cargo management, the sprayed in bed liner, the electronic stability control, which all empty trucks need. That's good. That's good. So, is that anti sway bar in the back, is that standard on the XD? Yes, it is. Okay, good, good. 
All right. Well, we're learning to bikes. Awesome truck. So, and uh, the highest uh, that goes is 10 on the, yeah. on the integrated brake yeah. controller. Okay. And it's made by Taconscious. It must be a relative of the Prodigy. Yes. Yeah, there. We got lights on. We're on auto. Actually, when you put lights on, the like plug running. comes undone. I like running with lights on. Yeah, you need to. If that plug comes in, then you have no idea you lost your brakes. Yeah, that's right. Well, the steering's pretty stiff on this. This is the first time I drove one. Is it? No, really? I didn't. I did the off-road, but that doesn't count because there's no really stress. You know, it's not really under stress like this is. It's towing. Now, like I got tow mode, tow mode on. on. Is it? Where do I see the It's button? over there. It's just lit up above the zero on the tachometer. Okay, I see it now. Right there. Tow mode is on. This guy's stealing your signs. You're the last one to drive today. Wow, and I'm turning so I can do some trailer drifting. Yeah, I like that. Oh, come on. Where's my power? Where's my power? It's coming. It's right there. <laughs> so what is peak torque at? Is it 25? 32. 32 is peak torque? That's pretty high. That's almost wide open. Nah, you're thinking no. horsepower. I'm torque. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I was. I'm sorry. I missed your question. Yeah, that's 16. 16 is peak torque. Yeah. What's peak horsepower at? 32. Okay. Now I understand. Because that should come on real early. Six speed. So I can't tell if you're in third end. gear. Wait, how do you know that? I don't see it on there. Why? It's not my first rodeo on here. Okay. Hey, this eight and a half foot wide trailer? Yeah. Okay, good. We're nice actually, and wide. I we, can this see is the, almost the size of these mirrors. are all the way out, aren't these they? These are all the way out. Okay. So these are the trailers that we actually test with. Okay. So we did not go borrow trailers or anything. Cool. These are our test trailers. I really want a 12,000 pound trailer. What the hell? What? We Why? couldn't do it for everybody. Come on. Well, why not? Oh, I mean, we we could have but what, gooseneck. It's not, not CDL range yet. No, no. So what the why didn't we? Kind, we just kind of went with the nine thousand because that was very typical weight plan. Wait for this kind of customer. Well, this is an extreme yeah, drive. Right. Come on, let's go find one. We go down. Yeah, we we always train. We have that another train. We'll take the go. truck car out of that one. Yeah, put it in here and we'll let's be do it. Let's Does this have gooseneck ball in it? I really, this. yeah, I really want to see how far forward is the gooseneck ball in front of the axle. You know, it's just a couple inches. Couple, well, yeah. that's fine. Like yeah. two. Yeah, you don't, you don't want it too far back. And this the torque on this is what? It's like 455. 555. Triple nickels on the yeah. torque. Now we're going downhill. Let's see. Of course, hill descent isn't going to work at this point. I'm going to oh, see sure. what grade shifting. Do I hit? The, now, do I have to hit the brake for grade shifting and gauge, or will it do it by the hill descent? By no, the angle? you just give, give it some give it some brake input, just a light okay, brake. Is input. that all I've got to do? That's I mean, it. we won't do it without brake input. No, right? we will okay. not. Some so, trucks do, some trucks don't. In total, so. and that's and that's it. And so, when we went in and studied this, one of the things we wanted to do, and we drove a lot of vehicles, and we want to give that to the customer. We wanted the customer to feel like they were in control of that downshift okay, that happened. Right, the downshift. Okay. So on some of the smaller hills that we saw, if we were going at 65 or whatever, and we came down, we wanted to take and enjoy that speed as we came into the next hill. So if you're automatically downshifting, you're not enjoying that speed. So we just kept and we left right. that to the customer as a brake apply. It's only a short half second brake apply, and you get that downshift. It's not a ride the brakes. Okay, because that's a lot like how tow mode is you can take it off and slide up the next hill too. That's tow right. mode will keep your RPMs up. That's right. You can do that too. So I'm holding steady about 2,500 RPMs at 60 miles an hour and we're going down at what? Is this like about, 8 or 8%? It's about 6%. It's only a 6% grade. Okay. Must be the cat missing full base. I thought I was going down to the hill. Okay. It's holding me there. And I can't use cruise control with it though, right? Cruise control will kick off when I hit the brake? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's not designed to work together. Okay. Circulating this, ball. Do you know why they decided to go with that as being robust uh, versus the nice tight rack and pinion? Or you know, the, the robust. I mean, we're we're looking to make a truck that's yeah. solid and, and the customer can rely on. It's yeah. a that's a big. Deal. You know, semis tried to go rack and pinion. Freightliner did it with their Cascadia and so did Kenworth, but they both quit it after two years. Oh so right. I don't, yeah. really don't know what the mechanical failure was or what it was. After this bridge, I'm sorry. We'll make a left. Make it U-turn. Oh, that bridge right there. That's pretty close. I should probably get in the other lane. Yeah, when you get a chance. Oh, that's a, this car is out of my way. Good gosh, they're just flying down that hill. That's I didn't know that good. tractor trailers had ever done the. Yeah, Freightliner and Kenworth did it. Freightliner hung right in there here. longer than Kenworth did, but I never got a report on why they both quit them. Hmm. But I thought they, because you know, Reckon Bay is nice and tight. I'm have to make some hand like a car and this had rack and pinion before you went to the HD so I was trying to figure out 
Well, I, mean, I know it's because of the robust thing. I just thought maybe there was a something else. I mean, even though Dodge and a two-wheel drive is heavy duty, has rack and pinion. Yeah, the two-wheel drive version. Yeah, so and I don't know if they can do it in a two-wheel drive. You should be able to do it in, in quite a heavy weight class. Is it's that all there is to this route? I want to go a long yeah. ways. I want to go to like Albuquerque or something. <laughs> Pretty quiet. I'll, I've got to ask the Cummins guy how many decibels is. Do you know what the decibel rating is? I don't know. NVH, NVH guy was, will be there tomorrow. Okay. He should be able to tell you what the... I guess I could take off now. Take off on the outside lane. lane. Ah! Drift! Drift, Trader, drift! You guys got this pretty well level. The traders are tall. They're way off the ground. This is almost like an RV more than it's a cargo truck. And that's a big part of what we consider because, because we're testing. We... Customers probably aren't pulling these boxers, but they are going to be pulling toy yeah. haulers, right? Yeah. So we want to be able to replicate that toy hauler, but we don't need a sofa, a toilet, and you know a bed in our right. trailer. We, we, we've tried that before. It's full of parts. Is that what it's? It's, it's a car. Oh, it's a car. It's a car. It's an old test. It's all shook up. In it. Well, so is this the trailer used at the Davis Dam test? This is or the yes. yeah, SAE. This isn't actually the SAE trailer. The SAE trailer is very close to this, but this is a. a Another test trailer. This is more our normal test trailer that is the simulated toy. Model. Okay. So we wanted that width, we wanted that height, we wanted that side profile to work on and understand stability as we work on this program as well as other competitors. What what gear am I in now? I'm guessing you're in four. Yeah, gear in four. Okay. You're gonna drop down, you're gonna catch third about 61 miles per hour. What's your name, sir? Ryan Regeer. Here, and you are an engineer? Test. Test. I work at the Privy yes. Oh, cool. Yes, sir. So you live in Arizona? I live here. So yes, I do. You handle the heat. Yes. I smile this time of year when I say that. <laughs> if you'd asked me four or five months ago, I wouldn't oh, have been yeah. smiled. I said, yes, I live here. I usually only come here in the winter, so that's all I know. I couldn't handle the heat. You're at, uh, where do you live? Colorado. That's what I thought. I would seen your video. I got it. Well, no, you saw the one from the Denver Auto Show? It's the last I, didn't, one I, I didn't see that one. I've seen the tunnel ones or the Eisenhower. Uh, yeah. What, uh, I'm surprised at the acceleration is. I thought it'd be a little faster with 9,000 pounds. Big frontal area makes a big Well, is it change much on a 12,000 pound trainer or will it no. climb the hill? It's, it's, That's with this really trailer, 12,000 pounds and 9,000 pounds, it's not a big, it's almost not. When I get to Colorado, I can, I can test a 12 or 14 or whatever you guys decide to rate this at. What do you use for the trailer? I got, well, I've got horse trainers. I, I got, know you got the uh, horse trailer. I got the, those are the Logan Coach, and I have Logan Trail flatbeds. I got oh. a goose neck that's 24,000 pounds. I have another one I can go 14,000 pounds on. Bumper pull. So I've got a lot of test trainers. Okay. I've got a lot of ATV trainers. Yeah, it's red line's about 4,000, huh? Right under the shore, doesn't it? It's wrapped pretty high. Sway bars on there and weight distributing hitch, so this thing shouldn't be crazy. I'm sure you balanced it really well. It's floating down to about 1600 RPM. Yeah, but you can definitely tell on trucks that are, don't have this robustness. This exact same setup, you will not be doing any. You yeah. will be bouncing, bouncing, bouncing. Well, it's bouncing. smooth. It's definitely smooth. Acceleration smooth. I just started pulling back in the seat a little more. I'm sure it will empty. I just did off road. So tomorrow, are we gonna do an autocross road tomorrow? Yeah, we'll here? be at the marketability course. I love you know the old the old Titan. I was the original launch in uh, Napa oh, yeah, Valley, yeah. and you were there. I've been on this program. Oh, I've been in a truck group for almost. That was fun. All the Lamborghinis years. on our way to Pebble Beach out there. The kick, but you know, right here. Yeah. Let's see how well this breaks. Looks like a trailer. It's all electric. I'm confused. I'm confused too. Let's see. Let me see how well this works. Oh, no. Man, that was a short track. That's all. I'm, I'm the trailer guy. I'm going to spend hours in this in the trailer. I want a bigger trailer. I'm sure they're going to get you a truck. I, it, it's just the sheer number of people that had to get through. We had to yeah. shorten it. It's, yeah. We would have... 
a lot of people would have. I mean, there's some people that this was more than enough. There's one yeah. guy, I mean, with several people, this is the first time I ever towed a trailer. And then, you know, some of the others wanted more time, but yeah, in a, in a bent. Well, on the autocross, is like the old Titan was so much fun on autocross. Yeah. You could just do kitties when yeah. you want, you could drift with it. It was great for that. I'm Mr. Truck here with Aaron Clement, and we you are the guy for all my transmission questions. I hope to answer them properly. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I talked to Rich a little bit about exhaust brakes, and there is no exhaust brake, I guess, on this yet. Uh, curious, you know me, I'll be pushing for that, but uh, the Cummins guys said talk to you about all this. I'm, I'm going to talk to them more about the turbos. So this ice and transmission, I'm a big fan of that. I know Ram has it, and Toyota has it, and their big trucks, their Hinos and all that. So I'm a big fan of transmission. It's in that same category, you know, that Allison is. So what, what did you do for testing, like grade shifting and all that in the tow mode uh, to, to make sure that, the, that your engine is using, I guess, almost like an engine braking to, to slow you down? How does that work? What did you do to make it different? So what we did is, um, as you apply the brake, when you're coming down the grade, it'll uh, downshift into what we feel is appropriate gear, give you enough engine braking so that you can comfortably go down the, down the grade at the speed that you desire. Is there a certain RPM that it kicks in at or works best at? Or, you know, used to be, you know, we always wanted higher RPMs for all that to work, exhaust brakes and grade shifting. And then a lot of these transmissions have more gears now, and so they, they shift weirder. But and I'm glad you guys got a lower actual now. That will help grade shifting because your RPMs are up high enough to kick in, and you can't kick it in too high or it'll blow the engine, so all that's controlled. But So how did you figure that out? Like what RPMs does it kick in? When does it kick out and go down to the next gear? Well, getting that detail would be difficult, but w what we've done is is that, you know, most grades where people are running 65 coming down because that's most national highway speed. So what we've tried to do is keep that between 60 to 65 where it's comfortable and, and hit you at the RPM that it's not too high, that you think that it's damaging the motor, right. but keep it low enough that you can feel the, the engine braking and use that engine to slow you down and keep you at a comfortable speed. Uh, combined with the, the chassis on this, it, it gives you a really comfortable, stable feel gives you the feedback from the motor and it just really makes you confident that you can descend that hill without white knuckling it. Right, and that's always a big thing. I'm up in Colorado and we have, you know, all these tall hills. We do this 11,013 Eisenhower tunnel all the time. And that come down, you know, about whatever it is, eight miles at uh, all that grade. It's in a 7% grade, which is not always common on interstate. So I really like the, the truck to work for me. It saved my brakes and, and saved me <laughs> all that stuff. But that's cool. Well, what's, what's red line on this engine? Do you know offhand? It's 4,000, I think, tops 4,200 max RPM. Okay. Um, speaking of Eisenhower, we've been up and down Eisenhower a bunch of times. Yeah. How big uh, a trailer would you use? On that? We'd normally pull 9,000 pounds. This is almost, well, this is the SE trailer, but the uh, one we use is a little bit taller than this with 9,000 pounds for most of our testing or at GVWR. Okay, did you need 12,000 or yeah. 14 or whatever you're going to come out with? Yeah, so the total GCWR for that. Okay. So we test both. So we, we kind of use the 9,000 pounds as a typical customer, and then we also check it at max. Well, that's cool. And then, you know, you have, of course, you've already done the uh, 2807 SAE, so we, we know it, it keeps cool. It does all things that they make you do in that test, which is really good. But, you know, that's, I'm, I'm going to love to get this on some grades. I hope we get some 7% out here to see just how it holds you, you know, because some, some trucks are very good at that, some aren't. And this will be good. Of course, the diesel helps you too, keeps your RPMs in that lower band which uh, helps with grade shifting, but uh, yeah. So any, any secrets you want to share with me? We won't tell anybody. <laughs> I, I don't have any secrets. If you get a chance to get over to where we're doing the towing demonstration, you'll get to go up and down some 6%. Okay, what's the biggest trade we're going to get? You're at 9,000 pounds. 9, yeah. I want a 12,000 pound gooseneck. Can we find one? Is there one here? I don't think they brought one up oh, here. Oh, man. <laughs> Well, if you're going to be in that class, if that's the size of the truck it is, I need to see what it feels like at 12,000. I, I can, when you get me one to Colorado, I'll get her 12 or 13 or 14 or whatever it is. But Okay, that's cool. This is like cargo management sit under the seat. Yeah, so this this will fold. If you pull this up and then fold it down, you got a nice flat fo floor. It's also got a locking availability. You can lock and unlock it from this position as well. Is that a cup holder or was that a round hole? That's this. The round holes to access this lock. Oh, I see. Okay. So in either position, you can, you know, here or okay. here, you know. So they made it so it's accessible, and then Ooh, and storage. some like storage that. underneath. Both sides are identical. Um, this yeah, has the oh, bag. That's the bag for the greasy ball. Bag for the greasy ball <laughs> for the uh, 
<laughs> hitch in the back. Oh, cool. And then on the seat themselves, it gets a bag holder. Oh, yeah. And then uh, there's a lever to put it down, so it's not just a pull system. We made it so it latches to come down. Oh, that's cool. And then you've got the electrical outlet in the back for the 110. Well, this is ready to go take the family everywhere. Everywhere. Thank you, sir. Yep, no problem.